Hi, John. What are we inside today? Uh, this is the KC-135. This is the tanker uh, aircraft, uh, jet tanker. Uh, it's been used for many years, actually five, six, seven decades. They're still flying the KC-135. So when did this first come out? This came out in the mid-50s, 1955-56 time frame. I think this airplane is a 57 model. So when I was an instructor here, a lot of the students were younger than the airplanes that they were training in. So. I bet. Oh my, how many people can fit inside of this when you were out in flight? Well, when we're typically in flight, our mission is to carry fuel. Mm -hmm. Not people. You're your reloader, okay. Yeah, so we, we can carry cargo and, and people, but at the expense of fuel. So our primary mission is fuel. So There the, is the, room the, that the, we can fit the yeah, people in. Yeah, so you could put, I don't know, you could stand a whole bunch of people in there, but it wouldn't be very comfortable. What's the <laughs> most amount of fuel this could hold that you guys are refueling? About 30,000 gallons. Wow. 180,000 pounds of fuel. <laughs> that was fuel for everybody. I yeah. love it. So, yeah, most of the fuel the fuel is in the wings, and where the airliners put your luggage, we have fuel tanks. So we have a center wing tank, which is the biggest tank, a forward body tank right up here, an aft body tank, and then an upper deck tank. And so the fuel all comes out of the wings or out of the tanks, and we can send it out to boom and refuel other airplanes. So, how much was a typical crew? Four-man crew, pilot, a co-pilot, a navigator, and a boom operator. So that's, now that's in the A model. When they did the, uh, the upgrade to the re-engined, the R models, um, they modified the crew com composition uh, with increase in avionics. They kind of deleted the navigator position in a lot of situations, but uh, pilot, co-pilot, navigator, and boom operator. Wow. And the boom operator's job is the most critical because he's at the back actually doing the refueling. So it's our, our mission is to refuel. We need the boom operator. Okay, so let's see what we have going on over here. Okay, this is the crew, the uh, cockpit, the crew positions, the pilot and the co-pilot, the, nav the navigator and the boom operator. The boom operator would be here for takeoff and for landing and during cruise. And when we go to refuel, he goes to the back and then he lays down in the That's boom That's the fun pond. part, really. Yeah, lays. he lays down there. Yeah, so we, uh, we joke about the boom operator having the, the best job in the Air Force because he has three officers that take him to work. And at work, he lays on his belly and <laughs> passes gas. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, that's, right when he's back there, that's awesome. And then I love how we have the, all the, these. Those, that's all that's, circuit breakers. Oh, okay. So, so the boom operator when, didn't have to deal with all of these. No, it, but if uh, we if something quits working, we're going to ask the boom operator, hey, check the circuit breakers. And most of these circuit breakers are out. They have the little white you can see. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty easy to see a circuit breaker that's popped. Yeah. So those are all set prior to the takeoff. This is awesome. I feel like I'm flying with you. <laughs> okay. What have we got going on over okay. here? Okay. Well, this is the uh, the cockpit. This is the pilot's position. This is the uh, co-pilot's position. We have the flight instruments right there in front of you. They're, they're identical on either side, so either either pilot is able to fly So if I airplane. freeze and fly, you could take over and... That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And we both have a yoke, and so we can want to turn left. You go oh, left. Nice. You want to go right. You turn That's right. That's so cool. You want to go go up. You pull back. You want to go down. You push forward. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Wow. So, and this is the fuel panel. So this show, this is shows you how the fuel is uh, positioned in the airplane. These are the wing tanks. This is the forward body tank. This is the center wing tank. This is the aft body tank. And then the little upper deck tank is here. And so we get a, uh, when we get a, the boom operator, when a receiver comes in and we have a contact, then we get a light that goes on, they have a contact made, and we can start refueling. And all of this up here. All of that, okay. A lot of this is set before we even take off. You have a pressurization panel. So we don't have to do much when we're in flight, that's good. We, we hope not. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh -oh. We have a pressurization panel, and we have an electrical panel, 
Uh, then we have the autopilot. We have uh, radios up here. So it's, it's pretty, pretty simple once you learn what the systems do and where they are. Yeah. So how many hours did you guys have to spend in here before you took them in flight? Uh, well, the, the ground school for a co-pilot was about uh, six, six weeks, yeah, and then about six weeks on the flight line. So it's like a three-month class, go through training. And uh, a pilot, a uh, pilot would normally be upgrading from a co-pilot position, so he didn't really need the academic, so he would come and just be a pilot upgrade, and uh, so he'd, he'd be here for uh, a month and a half. Yeah. So how long were you training here at Castle when you were instructing people? I was an instructor for three years. Uh, then I went to the Philippines for three years, and I came back here for another three years as an instructor. That so is It's a awesome. great job. It was a great job. I loved it. How fun. Well, you're always here on open cockpit days, right? Pretty much, yep. So if you want to come and pick his brain, remember, Memorial Day and Labor Day come to open cockpit day. Okay, this is the latrine. This is... Uh, it's a uh, uh, unisex, they're by, by both sexes. It's the uh, stand up is for the urinal and there's a sit down uh, seat there for uh, the ladies or uh, the female crew members. Um, it's, it's pretty sparse. I'm actually surprised at how spacious it is. It seems a little bit bigger than our modern day and, yeah. and yeah. it has a urinal and we don't have that in, in flight, you know, yeah. in a regular commercial right. plane. Right. That's so, really cool. Yeah. This is actually, this is a coffee water. This is something. Yeah. Real. Yeah. Okay. This is the galley. And uh, the galley, we have uh, water and, and coffee here. We have hot cups for, uh, we can make soup. And we have an oven. So we can do a, uh, a TV dinner uh, on our flights. I mean, when you're going across the ocean, you got enough, enough time. How long to, was um, like one of the longest flights you think that you guys took in here? The longest flights that I ever took in a tanker was just at seven hours. Okay, but some people were like... No, that was that was pretty much... We didn't do a whole lot of refueling, so we, we flew from uh, New Hampshire to uh, Madrid, Torrejon Air Base okay. in Madrid. And we had to deviate a lot of, around a lot of thunderstorms, so it took a little bit longer. Can you refuel your own plane in flight? No. No, no. okay. No. So that our, always... Our, um, our job is to be there f to refuel fighters or bombers or, or cargo airplanes uh, that need to fuel. That's their mission. That's so that they can right. do, their, do their mission. Now, KC 135s are very important. The refueling mission is very important because it gives uh, fighter aircraft or bomber aircraft the, the range to go and do their mission without having to land at a forward operating location or port base. Like the, the B-2s going to Iran and dropping their bombs, they used over 50 tanker aircraft to support those, those B B-2s going over and coming back. Wow. Yeah. So it was and, mostly a successful mission. Oh yes, it was a very successful mission. And you went to but, that, you went there? Oh no, 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 no. Oh, you didn't go no, there? No, no I've, been, I've been retired for several years, so put it that way. Um, there was a mission in 1957. They launched B-52s here from Castle. It was a power flight was the name of the operation. They were B-52B models, so they were the older, older version of the oh, B-52. Wow. And they used KC-97s to refuel them. So there were three B-52s that took off from Castle and went around the world refueling. Wow. And they, they so they, and they landed, they didn't land here because we were weathered out. We had, we had fog. They landed down in, in LA at March Air Base. But that was in 1957, Operation Power Flight. It took out over 150 KC-97s to refuel the three bombers wow. around the world. That's impressive. Yeah. It's impressive that they did it back in 1957. Right, because yeah, now it'd be a lot. It would be a little more efficient now. Yes, it's much much more efficient. The aircraft are much more efficient, and uh, but the mission's the same. Okay, go on to the back here. We have tie downs here, so we carry cargo. We can tie it down, secure it, so it doesn't flop around while we're flying. Um, the uh, troop seats on the sides—they're not very comfortable. 
Uh, typically, there are no seats like this. This would be a setup for a, a VIP flight, maybe a, a colonel or a general that's uh, on his way and he needs a place to sit and do his paperwork or whatever. So, go on to the back. <clears throat> this auxiliary power unit is back here. This provides uh, electrical power for the aircraft when it's on the ground. Um, it's noisy <laughs> and makes it, it's a little scary when it starts up. It's got a, a back, basically it's a jet engine oh, wow. inside it. So, and then at the back here, this is the step down to the boom pod. Uh, gaseous oxygen system is the backup. We have liquid oxygen system for the, for the crew when we're flying. We are pressurized all the time, but if uh, we lose pressurization, we have oxygen available. So. And we step down and actually lay down. And this is where the man and, lays. And the boom operator lays down in there and flies the boom. This is so impressive. Wow. Massive. What was it like flying this? It was a great airplane. Great airplane to fly. Uh, instructing was uh, a very rewarding job. I really enjoyed instructing uh, pilots and co-pilots. Uh, as they were going through the, the training program here at Castle. Castle trained all of the B-52 and KC-135 air crew members for four decades. Wow. That's impressive. When you think about how many people came through here to do that, that's really yeah. impressive. Yep. The newest tanker I ever flew was a 1962 model. Really? <laughs> so. I'm a little older than that, but uh, not much. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, you were flying planes older than you, essentially, yeah. when you first well, started. The, the, the students were, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, this is the business end of the KC-135. This is where the boom is. This is where we get our mission done. The boom operator, this is the boom pod. This is where he lays down on his belly. He's looking out this window, the boom sighting window. The boom's there, it drops down, and a receiver comes in. Now the receiver can line up on the center line of the tanker, which is this yellow line, yellow stripe there. Oh, okay. And there are receiver director lights, forward, aft, up, and down. And those are all the way up forward under the cockpit. So the receiver airplane knows where he is in relation to us with those receiver director lights. Plus the boom operator can talk to him. Okay. Now, when the boom comes down, the boom is a flyable boom, so, and it's controlled with the rudder vaders, and that's done by the boom operator. And the boom retracts and extends, and when a receiver comes in, he has a receptacle, a refueling receptacle. It looks a lot like a pole vaulting chute. <laughs> it's like a, a box that you put the the pole okay. vaulting pole in, but so the boom is out and, and ex extended, the uh, receiver comes in, he opens up the doors on his receptacle, and we extend the boom, and we have a contact made. Everything has to line up just right. Yeah, okay, and when we have a contact made, the receiver has toggles. He physically, his airplane physically toggles to the boom. That is so neat. So we are physically connected in flight. Wow. And with that connection, we refuel. That gives us a pumping condition so we can turn on the pumps and send the, send the fuel. That seems so hard. Is it actually easier when you've been doing this for a long time? It's, it takes practice. Uh, so it's every the, time it is, it, it's, it's a skill. Yeah. Our, our mission <laughs> is to refuel, and every mission in a tanker, we, we refuel. Wow. That's really we neat. refuel something. <laughs>